take your art and put it as many places as you can. That's what I did. I took my art and I put it up as many places as I could. And whether people liked it or not, they didn't have a choice. You know, they have to experience it. You know, people are gonna like it, people are gonna hate it, but they don't matter in the scheme of things. Hello, and welcome to Art Restart, where we explore how artists are reinventing their fields and building a new landscape for the arts. I'm Pierre Carlo Talenti, the producer and editor of this podcast, brought to you by the Thomas S. Keenan Institute for the Arts at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. In this episode, we'll be hearing from muralist Troy Summerell. Troy's kind of a celebrity in his hometown of Virginia Beach, Virginia. His vibrant and joyful murals of flowers and ocean creatures can be seen in neighborhoods throughout the region, from the sides of large buildings to basketball backboards. He loves bringing joy to those who need it, and so, not surprisingly, he's often worked in hospitals that serve children. He recently completed his largest commission to date, a hundred-foot-long mural enlivening an entire hallway in Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters in Norfolk, Virginia. And now, even the hospital's ambulances are wrapped in Troy's unmistakable designs. His work also brightens the pediatric emergency room and the pediatric ICU at University of Florida Health, Jacksonville. And in 2019, he traveled to Oaxaca, Mexico to paint a mural as a gift to the international nonprofit Smile Train. Troy is also a small business owner. He launched Oni Tony Designs in 2014 to support his, at the time, nascent career as an artist. Oni Tony has since become a recognizable brand that sells an ever-expanding list of merchandise, from socks and beach towels to coffee mugs and t-shirts, all sporting Troy's signature aquatic creatures. Troy spoke to me from his home in Virginia Beach. I asked him to talk about what it took for him, a self-taught artist, to commit to making his painting his career. So I was about 34, but you know, leading up to that, you know, I had been in sales. You know, I have a marketing degree from JMU uh, in Harrisonburg, Virginia. You know, I had done, I had started a business that didn't work out. I'd been in sales. I had done some traveling. I went back to being in, working in the restaurants. You know, I used to be a bartender and bar back uh, at the oceanfront. And yeah, I was, you know, at a, at a crossroads, you know, at that point in my life. And I sat down, you know, I'd always loved art. The one thing is it, ties back to the restaurants is, you know, I'd, I'd been in restaurants and you say, you, you know, most restaurants you see this art. And I thought, man, could I do that? You know, wouldn't that be cool to do that? What kind of art appealed to you that you saw? Well, I think, you know, when you don't have a style or a voice yet, you know, um, a lot of artists like me, you know, you start out doing abstract paintings. So big abstract paintings, I always thought were super cool. And I always wonder, could I do that? You know, because at the time I really didn't have a direction I know I liked making stuff, but you know, as an artist, um, it's also kind of like when you play. When I grew up playing sports, there's always somebody better. You know, there's always. Uh, it's not until I learned later that there's so much room to be an artist. You know what I mean? So, um, so that that was one of uh, the main things. Yeah, just being inspired by art, by big, colorful art, I think kind of helped the process along for me. Then sitting down and being like, okay, what, what, what can I do? And, and, and I did a lot of abstract art when I started. I did a ton of abstract art because again, I didn't really have my direction or kind of voice yet. So, And so how did you, how long did it take for you to develop your style and then to actually make your first mural? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it took, I don't know, you know, at the time frame is, is kind of tough because you know, I, I'd revisit it or, I, you know, I'd start, we'd start working or do it, going to other things. But, um, you know, art was a constant for me for probably about 10 years from when I first started trying. I, I was I was inspired. I wanted to make something. I wanted to see if I could do it. And then, you know, I, I tell the story a lot. You know, any surfer, you know, we grow up uh, in school on the notebooks, you know, drawing waves. Um, so that, that's a pretty <laughs> staple, um, a staple thing if you surf or bodyboard. So yeah, it wasn't till later I'd gone through a tough period where I just didn't feel, I didn't really have any inspiration or know what I wanted to do. And I was at a real low point and I was like, let me sit down and draw these drawings. I didn't feel like I was ever a great drawer, but I sat down and I drew and I drew these four drawings 
it was the fish, the turtles, whale, and a peacock, and they all had waves. So it was four pictures, and I drew these four pictures, and I was like, I think I have something here. Uh, and then that's how, uh, that's kind of how Oni Tony, the ball started rolling towards, you know, establishing Oni Tony. So before we talk about Oni Tony and establishing yourself as an arts business person, yeah. I do want to talk about how, because your artwork is huge. I mean, it's it sometimes covers entire trucks and walls. Right. So what happened between the, the four drawings mm -hmm. and creating these huge pieces? Yeah, I thought... You know, when you see my fish, um, you know, if it was six inches, you know, it, it might not be that good or, or inspiring. But, you know, what I quickly found out, if you make that, you know, if it's 60 feet, you know, then you're really making an impression on people. And it comes back to the first thing I didn't know. And I feel like it's a lot of artists out there, the same thing. Like, I didn't know if I could do it. Um, you know, can I make this thing that's, you know, eight by 10? Can I make it 80 to 100 feet long? And... I got a, I was lucky enough, after, you know, I believed in these drawings so much in this idea and, and, and I got a space at the oceanfront, a studio and the landlord was super supportive and he, um, and I wanted to do a mural, but I wasn't sure what. And he said, um, you know, he, Lee Jones is an awesome guy. He said, oh, that he had put a mural on his building in the seventies and it got in the front page of the paper. And I just thought that was, you know, you got, that's the biggest thing with, with murals is, you know, you're getting permission. And I, this is before using projectors, and I, um, I sat out and did the first mural. And it takes a lot of time to scale it. You know, I didn't use the grid. A lot of mural artists use grids um, or projectors. So it was freehand. You hadn't developed the techniques that, that you use now as a muralist. Correct. And what I, what I was doing was I was teaching myself through trial and error, just like any other parts of my, you know, I do these surfboard sculptures or or, or the murals or the textiles or whatever. It's, um, you know, I'm self-taught. So uh, in the grind, you don't really realize it, but, you know, I had taught myself looking back, you know, if I, you know, we painted on brick. Um, that's the thing, priming the brick, knowing that you have to prime the wall first or, or, or what kind of, roll we were using tiny rollers. I mean, I was using like the four inch rollers for, you know, this <laughs> huge, this huge wall. Um, and that, that was the time too, you bought only the paint, you know, money, we didn't have a lot of money then. And, you know, I say then it's five years ago, six years ago, but, but you'd buy just enough paint. Um, now, you know, if you have the paint, you have the rollers, you know, projector super easy, you know, that took me, that first mural took me, you know, almost a month off and on to do when now, if I did it, it'd probably take me about three days. So, but the, but the most important thing is I literally had, I was teaching myself in those moments how to do it. And looking back, I just, I, it's just amazing that I, I'm thankful for those, those really tough times because it helps me for anything I paint going forward now with the confidence um, to be able to paint anything, really, I feel like now. so It's interesting because you mentioned you know, that one of the tough parts of being a muralist is getting permission to, right. to use surfaces, right? right? But also, there's a, I get a sense that you had to give yourself permission to try something kind of scary. Where did that come from, that kind of courage to go ahead and do it? Right. Well, you know, at the time when I went all in on this, this is what I had to do. You know, it, it was, you were, I jumped all in on it. You know, there was no alternative. You know, I, I wanted to do it. I thought it would be cool. I thought it'd be so awesome to be one of these guys or people, you know, artists that could do something like that. So I got a lot of, especially the first handful of murals I did in my hometown, I got a lot of negative initial feedback and that's a tough you know you're, you're trying to put up something that you want to be good in the first place you have enough pressure on yourself to do that insurmountable pressure like can i make this good enough that was my main thing are the lines crisp does it look good when you step back and everything's you know to scale does it make sense is it happening for me my art is really simple i say it's really simple but you know my my goal and my art is to make people happy in that moment you know there's not a lot of there's not a lot of depth to it uh, in, in my thing it's is trying to get people in that moment to be happy. So, so yeah, a, a ton of pressure on myself. But you know, just like the great part of that of getting the hate at the beginning, a lot of these people, you know, they they wanted to know who gave me permission, who did I think I was? I was going to ruin the neighborhood. And and what's funny about how this thing has worked out is usually the people that are complaining at the beginning have turned out to be the first people taking a picture. Uh, in front of the mural when they're done. So, I mean, it's happened multiple times. I, literally, my first five murals, I have I've had people yelling at me, uh, cursing me out, 
uh, asking who gave me permission, uh, who do I think I was. And then those people, I guess over time, you know, um, turned out take, you know, there they are taking pictures in front of it and couldn't be happier. So it's funny how art does that, uh, to people. And, and I don't know if it's on their end, maybe not having input. I think a lot of people want to be, have input on where they live. And, you know, for us down here in Virginia beach, it was a new thing. Uh, you know, there's been murals for, for a long time, but you know, this whole movement of, of revitalizing areas and neighborhoods, not for monetary gain, uh, that usually comes later with the gentrifying, but, but for uh, somebody like me who, who wanted to express themselves and wanted to make a positive impact, you know, that was new to a lot of people, you know, even five years ago. So at what point did you, cause you've created a business, Oni Tony Designs, right? right. Mm-hmm. Which is trademark. So at what point in this new venture of yours at the time, did you come up with the idea of creating this business and, and actually getting funded to do it? Right. Yeah, well, I have a marketing degree. You know, I've tried. I've been trying to figure, and I mean, that's that's twenty years ago, but but I feel like it's helped me at, from JMU. I feel like it's helped me in the sense that you know, from doing business plans, uh, that it's helped me kind of have a focus because, like, I want to do this. So how can I do it so that I can have a I can have the things that I want? You know, I have a son now that's just turned a year old and 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 a awesome supportive fiance that unfortunately gets to hear all the tough times, you know, she gets the kind of the brunt of, of that stuff. But, but for us is how do I make a business that can support us and have the life that we want? And then how can we do these positive things? Because, you know, we, we, we're fully aware how short life is and what the lifespan of this, you know, even this idea is. So, you know, I believed in the designs from the get go. That's why I went all in on it. And then it was, okay, we believe in it. Let's do these projects to prove it works. Uh, which it has. And the other thing is like, keep, I had to keep going, you know, we, to pay the rent, I, I had to do things that weren't necessarily for marketing, but ended up getting a lot of attention, but I also had to do it to pay the bills, you know? So it was a, it was a, I have to do this to keep going. I might not have wanted to do certain things. And I feel like I haven't gone outside of, uh, I haven't, really haven't compromised uh, my vision, you know, or, or what Oni Tony is about. But, you know, keeping going, it, you know, never stopping and never really doing anything else but this. You know, I refuse, have refused to, even when it's gotten super tough, to just keep going and maybe do some things that, I, you know, may not be exactly for the vision then, but down the road, it'll help us get there. So so at what point did you go all in? That point where you're like, no matter how tough it gets, this is what I'm doing now. Yeah. And there's no going back. Yeah. I mean, I've had some tough times uh, when we were setting the gallery, when the studio gallery up. And um, things weren't going the way I wanted that I thought I was in over my head. There's some times where I've started. So the studio gallery, you opened a, a kind of a storefront? Uh, yeah, well, it was a gallery studio space. Um, it was called Studio 17. It, ha- it was there for about two, we had for about two years. And then, you know, I didn't renew my lease. And it was the best thing that could have happened for me, for the art, for the business, because it freed me up then. You know, I'd gotten romanced into a community space that artists could have shows, you know, then transfer into a pop-up shop. And, you know, you learn through all these things, you know, what works and what doesn't. The neighborhood started taking off um, with the arts district. Rent started going up. But I had had all these experience. We had events that we raised tens of thousands of dollars for, for local charities. Um, I had taught myself how to paint murals. You know, I, I had gotten, I had, I had gotten really good at the surfboard sculptures you know, we made an impact in the community. And then once I closed that or didn't renew the lease on that, it free it, it suddenly freed me up to now be mobile with all these skills. And then that's when things kind of really started picking up because then I could paint, I could paint murals, you know, assuming all over town, not have to worry about that rent. And then you realize like, it's so impossible as a artist at my price point to have a studio space. And to just sell art without any kind of anything else. What's helped me was, is the murals because nobody started caring about my art or wanting to buy surfboards or, or whatever it is until, you know, I started making people, you know, care and happy in the community, you know? So the murals and shutting the gallery end up being the best thing. When, uh, when somebody asks you, what do you do for a living? Do you say I'm an artist now? Um, that's a good question. Well, I used to say that and then people would be like, okay, what, you know, what else do you do? Um, what, yeah, what do you do to pay the bills? Um, <sighs> I, you know, on, on a, on a real level, I don't really consider myself to be an artist because, How come? because I've ha- I've seen real artists. I've seen artists 
I had him in my gallery or, or, you know, I've been to, you know, I've been to the MoMA uh, in New York and I've been to these galleries and, you know, re- this, this art that makes you just, you know, stop in your tracks and be like, oh, I could never paint that. And it goes back to the sports thing and never being the best athlete, but loving to play baseball or basketball. But it's okay to not be the best because, you know, just like I found out, like I have this niche, I have this lane that I can like excel in. It's hard for me to say that, but, you know, I have this lane that I, I can be, you know, uh, that. But for me, on the basic level, I don't really consider myself to be an artist. I just believe in this thing. And that belief has translated into this stuff. So, you know, if people ask me to paint, you know, a golfer or something like that, you know, I don't, I, I don't do that. You know, I, I have this set of designs. And then I'll, I'll, I'll call it only Tony clip art that I've done, you know, uh, complimentary things that I call any Tony clip art that complements the fish or the turtles. And that's what's helped build the brand and establish it. You know, people say they see my stuff everywhere. And that's all I get all the time is, oh, I see your stuff everywhere. It's because it all has that same feel and look. You know, there's thousands of black outline artists, you know, in the world, you know, trying to do the exact same thing I am. You know, I, I see it. But again, I just, I feel like I've gotten lucky that I got those characters and I like the way they look like I'm okay with how they look in on the buildings. I'm okay with how they look on the ambulances. I'm okay from where I started to what I've done. Like I've already done it. You know, I went to Mexico and painted, you know, did some mural at, at the foundation and, and I've traveled. I have murals in, in other countries. And for me, you know, I want my fiance and my baby to have a good life. You know, I've got to see now after we've caught up from the sleep deprivation and the tough uh, first, first five months, but you know, I'll show him, you know, one of the mugs and it's got the fish on it. And he loves all the stuff. He seems to smile every time he sees the stuff. But just to think that that could be his, you know, I hate to say legacy because I never even thought about it. Even when he was born, that this would be his his thing that he could be he could look back and um, and be proud of. But there's also a lot of weight with that and a lot of pressure for me. It's how can I do as much positive, happy stuff? When I say stuff, art, installations and murals. And the time I have and reach as many people and make as much difference as I can in the time that I have to do this and that we're here. So financially, I, I'm, I paid the rent. You know, we have a we have a house, we have a roof over our head and we're happy right now. So more money means more. I'm able to fund my own projects. I'm able to. It's OK that I can go paint these elementary school backboards at this elementary school that needs it. Or I can put up a mural here where I want without having to get permission or having to get funding. So. Um, and then, so, so there are, there are some, you have some, it sounds like some smaller passion projects that you just do on your own. Right. Mm-hmm. Like the, you said elementary schools or you mentioned the basketball, yeah, so the basketball I'll, backboards. I'll go, I used to play basketball growing up and, um, you know, it's just like when I saw my, my studio or when I paint a mural, a certain place, you know, I'd drive by these, these backboards that were downtrodden and, and nets hanging off of them and. And so what that was easy for me at first, because I could go take my ladder, I could go repaint a backboard, I could throw a new net on it. And all of a sudden you have a brand, you have this whole new thing. And uh, I remember the first one I did was on the, off the interstate in Virginia Beach. It was right on the interstate. So you have all these thousands of people. And I went, it was like my, that was my first, like uh, my first time painting something, you know, I don't think I'd done my mural yet. I hadn't done my mural yet. Oh. And this was my first, like, not graffiti project, but how do you say it when you, my first public art kind of thing where I didn't have permission. Yeah, it's um, kind of guerrilla yes, yes, art, yes. right? Yes, my yeah. first guerrilla art uh, experience was I went and I took my ladder. It was winter time. I think the wind was blowing like 20 Had miles. you scoped it out before? Oh, the yeah. Location? Oh, I drive, so I've become obsessed with these places. I, dr- I drive by oh. it since I was growing up, you know? Okay. So you, you drive by and you can see it right off the interstate. So I become obsessed with it. You know, I, I got to paint that one day. And yes, I went out there and painted it and I didn't tell anybody. And then two weeks later, I think um, the reporter who had done a story on me um, was like, hey, did you paint these backboards at, uh, off the interstate? I see them every time I drive home. Um, I'd love to do a story on that. And so they did a story and the one in the Sunday paper. And I was like, oh boy. So I got a very nice call from the city that said they appreciated it. Um, they actually, <laughs> uh, but if I would please um, let them know next time I had an idea like that. The great part about that was the next week I'm driving down the interstate and there's a crew out there painting the poles of fresh white. 
So the city oh. had seen what I had done, the story, and decided to repaint and uplift that park. And so, yeah. That's amazing because your painting actually made <laughs> embarrassed them and made everything else look bad. Right. I, yeah. I, I thought, you know, I thought they were painting over it. But yeah, it turns out they were making it even better, even cleaner. So, and I'd found out that's pretty much been the theme with me with certain cities that my work's appreciated um, after the fact. Maybe not before or during, but once it makes that impact, then it's appreciated and used, you know, maybe without my permission. But, you know, that's just a part of it. So do you have any advice for a self-taught artist like you mm-hmm. who who might be in a, at a fork in his career or in his life's journey as you were, right. who's looking to make his artistic mark in his community? You know, I, for me, it's, it's, e- it's easy now. Take your art and put it as many places as you can. That's what I did. I took my art and I put it up as many places as I could. And whether people liked it or not, they didn't have a choice. You know, they have to experience it. You know, people are going to like it. People are going to hate it. But they don't matter in the scheme of things. You know, to put up your art as many places as you can, as many times as you can. It's tough, too. You know, I put up a word mural. They call it a word mural. At the time, I just wanted to put this quote up at the in this art district. So I'd already put up so many Oni Tony murals. And, and I put up that quote. It's like, the quote is, be kind. Everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. And that's a real, it's been, it's been said a bunch, sometimes in a different order, but you know, that's extremely important because, you know, a lot of people when I started or even, you know, it's, it's, they, you know, I'm, I should do something else. Uh, I should give up. I I don't, you know, it's not good enough. You're not going to be whatever. And, and a lot of, the motivation behind the artwork is, you know, taking a tough time that you've been through or taking tough circumstances and trying to make something positive out of it. You know, all my happy smiling things doesn't come from a happy place. You know, it comes from struggle. It comes from depression. It comes from anxiety. It comes from, it comes from tragedy and loss. It comes from, you know, losing my cousin to leukemia, to my parent, my father dying, to these other challenging times I had uh, fighting depression and, and, and not having direction and not being, not being able to make an impact or, or have a purpose in my life, but being lucky enough to get these opportunities while I was just putting up art, like going back to that, because I kept going, because I kept putting up art, it got me these other opportunities. And that's what all ties in. If I didn't put my mural up, I never would have got the ambulances. If I didn't put this other mural up, I never would have gotten the children's hospital. If I wouldn't have done all that, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I'm going to get ready to do now. And so I just wish I, I didn't have a, ch- I didn't have a choice to quit. You know, I really didn't thank God for that. But, but I just, the only advice. And if anybody hears this is to just keep putting your art up as many places as you can and don't give up if you'd like to learn more about troy and see some of his work please head to uncsa.edu slash art restart i recently had the opportunity to interview some really inspiring artist change makers and i can't wait for you to hear from them you don't want to miss an upcoming episode so be sure to follow or subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you use Special thanks to Larissa Trinder. Our theme music is by Shanghai Restoration Project. I'm Piercarlo Talenti, and on behalf of the Keenan Institute for the Arts, thank you for listening.